Hello, and welcome to another episode of Podcast DX, the show that brings you interviews with people just like you, whose lives were forever changed by a medical diagnosis. I'm Lita. I'm Ron. And I'm just happy to be here. (laughs) Oh yeah, real happy. So today's show was inspired by recent events in North Carolina. There have been several cases of rabies in the area. Yeah, I actually heard about this. Please tell us some more, please. Well... Uh, Last week, a woman in Greensboro was in bed when a rabid fox entered her home through a dog door, climbed into her bed, and bit her. You gotta close the dog door at night. I mean, I've heard about iguanas uh, climbing into the bed with people in in Florida. Florida? Yeah. Yeah. One guy thought he was having a heart attack, but it was an iguana on his chest. Yep. Um, Yeah, they crawl through the open dog doors, they snuggle up with you for warmth, and... Bite you. I don't think they bite you. I think they just... Well, they might bite you. I don't think iguanas really bite. What the heck are you guys talking about? But they do eat spiders, so I don't mind if the iguanas come in. No, right. Okay. But I don't know about the foxes. Well, the reason why I think it came in was because it was rabid. Although okay. we've had birds in the house. and they All right, okay. back to rabies. So according to the CDC, there are approximately 60,000 human deaths from rabies virus annually. Is that in... The United States? No, that's worldwide. Oh, worldwide. Okay. Worldwide. And it's human deaths. It kills a lot more animals. Um, And what exactly is rabies, guys? Well, is is the term is rabies or are rabies? I was kind of wondering about It's a virus. Okay. It's is rabies. Rabies is a mammalian disease caused by rabidovirus. (laughs) Rabidovirus? Rabidovirus. That sounds good to me. Rabidovirus. So only mammals can get it? Yeah. Okay, good to know. So we are typically talking about someone getting rabies from a bite. The virus is transmitted from the infected mammal saliva into the bloodstream of the bite victim. In the U.S., people, bats, foxes, raccoons, dogs, and cats may transmit the virus to humans. People? People can give other people rabies? Well, no, not exactly. In very rare cases, humans have died from a rabies infection. If one of those 60,000 people that died, if their organs were donated, the individual to whom those organs were donated can contract the virus. Can contract the virus. Right. It is, that's rare. Okay. So they should have screening of rabies among donors before organ transplant surgery. But there currently is no screening for rabies for rabies for people that are about to donate and their that's organs. That's what we were talking about. And earlier. what about what about animals? They used to use. Yeah, they, they still, still use, do use. Yeah, and they don't. I don't think they, there's no screening for rabies before organ. I'm like you have a piece of cowhide in your head. Yeah, and they're afraid that I could get um, Krebs, Mad cow disease. But right. what about rabies? I could, well, it's been more than two years, so okay. I think I'm good. Okay. All right. All right. Then we should probably talk about the symptoms <laughs> of a rabies infection. Yeah. Let's uh, keep this train on the same track. Sure. <laughs> so the five stages of a rabies infection are incubation, prodrome. Prodrome. I like that word. It's a nice word. Acute neurologic period. Uh, and then what most people are familiar with, coma and unfortunately death. The first stage can be as quick as 10 days or, as Jean mentioned earlier, up to two years. Uh, It usually takes about two months for the symptoms to appear. And if the infected person does not receive the rabies vaccine before the symptoms appear, they will probably die. Uh, The mortality rate is 99.9% for those who go without treatment. Yeah, that's uh, pretty high. Yeah. So it's vital that um, if you have bites, um, make sure you clean with soap and water as soon as possible. Um, And if it's safe to do so, try to contain the animal that bit you. What happened to the lady in North Carolina? She held on to the fox for 12 minutes before um, EMS arrived so that that fox could be tested. Wow. Yeah. So... Then what after that testing, a lab will then be able to determine whether or not the animal was infected with the rabies virus or not. Uh, If you were bitten by an infected animal, you should probably receive post-exposure prophylaxis. Um, You'll receive a fast-acting rabies vaccine right away and then four injections over the next two weeks. Now, are those the things that they stick in your stomach? Somebody said the rabies vaccines are worse than... 
they used to be a whole host of injections in your stomach. Yeah. I don't think that's the case anymore. Okay. And um, we were saying like it's normally from a bite. Um, before the show, we were actually talking about you can also get it from eating fruit. So like if a bat is infected with rabies and it eats the fruit and then you eat the fruit, you can get it that way as well. But it's less likely to enter your bloodstream that way. But it's still a possibility. So don't eat fruit that's already been eaten by a bat. <laughs> okay. Or or licked on by a dog. or Yeah. All right. Uh, somebody with a rabies infection may experience muscle pain, spasms, weakness, or paralysis, nausea or vomiting, headaches, fever, dizziness, hallucinations, or delirium. They may be aggressive. They may have dilated pupils. They may have difficulty swallowing. They could be drooling, and then they may go into a coma. Yeah, very sounds like a zombie. Um, how can we prevent rabies? Well, if you work with animals infected with rabies on a regular basis, you should get the rabies vaccine as like a preventative. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, ensure that your pets are vaccinated according to the local law. That's a great preventative. Do not touch, provoke, or chase wild animals. If you're bitten by an unknown animal, seek medical care and make sure that the wound is thoroughly cleaned. Earlier, we mentioned about the 60,000 people um, who die annually due to the rabies infection. Half of those people that die are actually children under 15 years of age. Oh, so, all right. So now parents, it's important to teach children to be concerned about wild animals. Well, not concerned, but maybe wary. Yeah. Well, I didn't know if they understood what wary meant. Okay. Yeah, be wary or concerned with wild animals. And let someone know immediately if they're bitten or scratched by an animal. That's great advice. And also, not to eat fruit. And well, well, no, you, you want to eat fruit. fruit just don't make, eat fruit that bats were. Yeah, eating. So if bats, if you're in a tropical area where there's fruit bats that are constantly munching on the fruit, maybe netting is a good idea. So is this basically a disease that takes place in? Uh, it's it's found all over the all world. All over. Okay. Yeah. But it's, it's common in areas where there are lots of stray dogs wandering the streets. Okay. Or how about caves where bats like to live? I don't know. Okay. I'm not, we'd have to talk with the But just basically be careful. Yeah, just be careful. I mean, like, don't mess with the bats. And, okay, we're going to tell the story because we're, we've, we're, we've been very, very quick. Um, when I was young, when I was about mm, five years old and my sister was four, we were up at our um, cottage at the lake and we were at the end of a pier and there was a, I thought there was a bird circling in the air and then dipping down to drink water and then circling back in the air. And it kept getting closer and closer to us. And I turned and yelled back to my mother who was on the shore, oh, mom, look at the bird. And she came running down the deck and sa- and screamed at us, get down. And then she <laughs> reached down, grabbed my grabbed flip-flop. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> grabbed, her, grabbed my flip-flop and hit the bat and killed it. And it was a bat. And it was out during the day, so it very well could have been rabid. So um, stay away from bats that are out during the day and other animals that are acting oddly. And mothers with flip-flops. And mothers with flip-flops, because they are <laughs> dangerous. <laughs> well, um, I think that's it for today. So if our listeners have any questions or comments related to today's show, they can contact us at podcastdx at yahoo.com, through our website, podcastdx.com on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, or Instagram. And as always, please keep in mind that this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified healthcare provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition or treatment and before undertaking a new healthcare regime. And never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking it because of something you have heard on this podcast. Till next week.